So if you're participating in the 5K, the 6K trail run, or the half marathon, you're going to want to pay attention to this. And if you haven't signed up yet, I'm going to provide the information below. We're eight weeks out, so now's the time for you to really jump on this. Uh, it's going to be something amazing for us to experience together. If you're not confident about your performance, if you don't think you're in shape, the idea is we want you to get in shape for it. And that's another reason why I'm having this video because we're going to be starting the training for it. We're eight weeks out, so I'm going to give you a run schedule. I'm going to talk about breathing on this video right now. So down below this, you'll see I'm going to put in the comments a link to register and the code, which is Body Culture, to receive our team discount. So do that right now. If you're looking for somebody else to join in, you can invite somebody to be able to participate in the event as well. And if they want to be able to get in shape for it, then have them come to Body Culture because we're going to be getting you guys in shape to be able to do it so you don't have to stress about what's going to happen on the day of the event. It's on May 6th, so we have approximately eight weeks to be able to get in shape for this, and you can totally do this. So don't wait, don't delay, schedule right now. We're going to be doing some group runs leading up until May 6th, the actual event day, which is on a Sunday. It's in the morning. So there's going to be a couple group runs we'll schedule, and we'll have a variety of group runs that we do, uh, varying from beginner to intermediate, also to advanced. We have some really highly skilled runners at BC, so let's take advantage of it. So let's get into the breathing component. When you're breathing, when you're running, uh, it can become very challenging, so I would recommend anybody that's not aware of this, here's something that I use that kind of really keeps me focused. A long time ago, whenever I would run, and I would absolutely hate it, just to put that out there, wasn't one of my stronger uh, fitness moments for sure. And even now, I sometimes struggle with it. It's the whole mental aspect is the breathing component. Sometimes you might feel out of breath and we don't like how it makes us feel and we don't like how our heart feels inside of our chest when we're running. Well, breathing is an important part to be able to find clarity, find focus, to center yourself and also to calm your heart rate down and make everything much better. So there's something called rhythmic breathing and what rhythmic breathing is, it allows you to create a rhythm with your steps as you're running and your stride, syncing it with your heart rate. And the first one is called a uh, five count rhythmic breathing process. And it is you inhale for three steps and exhale. So it's kind of like a symphony. You have to be able to uh, sync that breathing pattern with your steps and it takes some time and it takes some practice but what it allows you to do is to be able to get your entire rhythm of your body and your steps and your heartbeat all in sync with each other so this way you feel more comfortable during your runs the other option is when you start to realize that maybe if you start to run up a slight incline or a grade or a hill or you just if you are on a flat and you just want to run faster what will happen is your heart rate will go up and it'll feel a little uncomfortable and you'll be aware that your heart rate has gone up and you might also feel that you can't keep up your breathing can't keep up with your heart rate you start to feel uncomfortable and you start to think in your head oh my god oh my god i need to walk you don't need to walk again we just need to adjust our breathing and that's a three count and that would be an inhalation of two steps and one exhalation so it would be and syncing that with your steps, okay? And there are more complex breathing patterns, but I just want you to make sure you understand as you start to do this, maybe this is something that can you, you, you can use or integrate into your running or your stepping, or even when you're on the performance trainers here in the studio, these are breathing patterns that you should start thinking about using. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, uh, more advanced techniques in terms of explosiveness and stride length when you're using your breathing patterns but that gives you an idea so any beginner out there try to use the three and two method three inhalations per step and then two exhalations per step and for individuals that are a little bit more advanced might want to use the two and one so two inhalations versus one exhalation per step um, 
What's very common is individuals will often do one step per inhale and one step per exhale. And if you are doing one step per inhale or one step per exhale, that would indicate that your heart rate is so high that you have an inability to be able to get in enough oxygen so you're constantly trying to keep up with both your heart rate being that fast and also get in the oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Some individuals might say, well, Thomas, I do like I inhale for two and I exhale for two or I inhale for three or I exhale for three. What's wrong with that? When they're equal, when you do a one to one ratio, uh, what often happens is as long as your performance is unaffected, you're absolutely fine. But what you might find is just like in training, we like to keep symmetry in our body, right? We like to be able to balance our left side with our right side. So in running, it's often the case where individuals have a strong side and they're always pushing off of their strong side with a lot more power, a lot more force than they are on their, whether their non-dominant side. So if I do a one-to-one -one ratio, that means for every inhalation and exhalation, I'm always going to be pushing off of with the most amount of force off of my stronger dominant side. So by doing an odd ratio, a three and two or a two and one, you're always going to be alternating which side you push off of so you'll have more symmetry and be able to create more power, more force through both your dominant side and your non-dominant side. Excellent, so moving on, I'm gonna switch over to show you what the run schedule looks like. It starts right now. I've uploaded it to the group. You'll see it in here in the file section. Download that schedule, print it out, and you'll follow that. Check this out. So stoked to be able to share the run schedule with you. This just is to give you a, a decent idea or an example. If you're one of our BC athletes and you're an avid runner and you've got your schedule, cool. Uh, this is for us individuals that don't have maybe a schedule or not familiar with it, or maybe you look at this and this gives you some ideas. Okay, so I made it very simple, and what it is, it's a 14-day cycle. We have eight weeks out to the event, so this is built out for 14 days, and there are several ways that you can do this, and let me show you. So day one all the way to day 14. So typically would start off with Sunday, even though Sunday would have been yesterday. You're going to start off with Monday right here and then just continue along. I have this broken down from beginner to intermediate and advance on the far right. So I'm going to start off with beginner just to describe that for the uh, beginners and intermediate and advanced you will follow along and it's the same exact concepts. So you see the weekday is here. And then we have your advanced level along with, excuse me, your, your fitness level or experience level along with what type of a run it is and the minutes or the hours that you need to run for each day, just to give you an example. So someone might be asking, well, how does this affect my build or burn schedule? Before we get into that, understand that this is a rough guideline that you could try to fit into your schedule, into your current build and burn schedule. Now, what may need to happen is you may need to get these runs in uh, either early in the morning and then you do your build or burn session in the evening or you do your, one of these runs that are prescribed here in the evening and you do your build and burn session in the morning if it happens to land on a day that you normally do a build or burn session. If it doesn't, you don't have to stress about it, okay? Or you could adjust accordingly. All right, so it's a 14-day schedule and it rotates every 14 days. And the concept here is that if I'm a beginner, here's where I'm at. Sundays are my long runs. Monday is an easy run. Tuesday is a moderate run. Wednesday is a long interval. Thursday is an easy run. Friday is a moderate run. Saturday is a long run. Sunday is an easy run. And then day nine, Monday is a moderate run. Day 10 is a long interval run. Uh, day 11 is an easy run. Day 12 is a moderate run. And day 13 is a short interval. And then day 14 is an easy run. At this point, day 15, you could start this all over again, but realistically, the idea is to improve the duration of your running, right? We're not going to get into miles. We're not going to get into uh, heart rates. We're not going to get into any of that just yet. The idea is 
I really like the concept of just making sure that you're able to run continuous uh, for the amount of minutes that are prescribed here. Because what happens is if for some reason I tell you to run X amount of miles or whatever it is, we don't know exactly where you are in terms of your ability to run long distances, right? Or if you can run long distances. So it's really great to have this general idea of I should be able to run for maybe whether it's 45 to 60 minutes if I'm a beginner on my long run day, uh, if I'm intermediate, 60 to 90 mini minutes and advanced, 1.5 to 2 hours. Now if you're a beginner and you think like, oh my god, that's way too long for me, the idea is don't worry about the duration necessarily just think about I need to move for 45 to 60 minutes even if it's at a very low intensity okay the idea is just you gotta put in that time and you have to just get comfortable with putting in that time okay whether you're a beginner intermediate or advanced as you become acclimated as your body starts to adapt physiologically and there's so many things that will be adapting throughout the course of this entire training process you will then yourself start to think about, well, I, well, that was cool. I did 60 minutes nonstop or I did 45 minutes not, uh, nonstop. And now maybe you want to think about, well, could I do it a little faster, right? And then some intermediate and advanced individuals will be thinking, well, how many miles did I complete in my six, 60 minutes or my 90 minutes? That will come up on your own and that's something that we can discuss later, but for now, get your time in, get your duration in, you're trying to move continuously without having to completely stop, all right? So that's what the run schedule looks like. I described the type of runs. Now, each experience level has their specific duration that they have to run, whether it's a long run, whether it's an easy run, whether it's a moderate run. So you'll stick to this type of schedule, okay? So for a beginner, the first long run is 45 to 60 minutes. You have not been running and yesterday was Sunday, so you're gonna skip that and it's okay. So easy goes right here in this column, which is Monday, that's today. So for a beginner, the beginners aren't gonna do any running today. Okay, intermediate should do from zero to 20 minutes and advanced should do 30 to 40 minutes, okay? So again, if you did your build or burn session this morning, you would want to do this this evening. If you are doing your build or burn session later, you would have done this this morning at some point. Um, and for some individuals, they might need to do it immediately after their build or burn session, okay? Now, obviously, listen, we only have one treadmill, right? So how do you get in that time? You're gonna have to suck it up and you're gonna have to go outside and go to a track and get it done. Bundle up if it's cold and get your time in, all right? Not such a huge deal, but if you wanna do this, this is something that you should definitely get started with. Or you might need to time it in a way where, uh, we definitely can't have long runs on the treadmill because everybody needs to use it, but it would be okay for individuals to use them for their easy runs or their moderate runs. And we're going to have to get used to running outside, period, because then when it's May 6th, uh, don't expect it to be warm out in the morning because last time we did it May 6th, it was a little chilly. But when you start running, you warm up. You're going to warm up whenever you start running, period. Now, Tuesday, which would be tomorrow, beginner moderate run would be 15 to 20 minutes. Maybe you need to start off with a walk with some light, light jogging in between as much as you can, but the point would be to do anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Don't judge yourself about how much distance that you cover. Okay, if you want to record what distance you, recover, you cover in that period of time, you can do that. I actually would recommend that, but don't obsess about the distance. It's just about knowing what you did from one week to the next week, so you can be conscious of your progress. Intermediate would do 30 to 40 minutes on Tuesday, that's tomorrow, and then advanced would do 40 to 60 minutes tomorrow, and so forth. This goes on and on according to your skill level, your experience level. Uh, Here's another example, long intervals, 25 to 30 minutes for beginner. Uh, intermediate is 40 to 50 and beginner, sorry, advanced is 60 to 70 minutes, much longer, but that, that means ultimately, this is one of the longer interval runs. 
So what does it mean by an interval run? I'm going to let you gauge that. That means you're going to be moving for that 25 to 30 minutes, but you're going to go up in intensity and down in intensity. You're familiar with what intervals are, and you can gauge what is comfortable for you. So if I'm a beginner, maybe I decide to run or jog at a faster pace, and that's for 30 seconds, and then maybe for 60 seconds, I decide to go at a just very slow, even pace, wherever my level is right now. But my goal is to get at least a minimum of 25 minutes of that in, okay? Same thing for the intermediate, same thing for the advanced. Now, opposite end, an idea for a long interval run for an advanced, if I have to do an hour to an hour and 10 minutes, I might decide to do because if I am advanced, I might do two minutes of running at a faster pace and two minutes of jogging, right? Two minutes of running, two minutes of jogging, or it might be uh, two minutes of running and three minutes of jogging. Maybe I need a little bit longer recovery period, but the idea is that you're going to create a disturbance in these longer interval runs by going up and by going down. So offsetting your pace between two intensities. And that also depends on how you feel. So I do not want you to stress out about exact numbers about how you're going to do it, what should the specific speed be, all of that stuff. The idea is just get started start running and start creating some i you know your own unique perspective on what type of intervals you can handle for yourself thursday for a beginner is an easy run zero minutes intermediate is zero to 20 and then you have advanced which is zero to 30. that's basically an easy low intensity run whatever low intensity is for you okay and it goes on and on and on and on and on okay now, what do you do whenever you reach the end of your 14-day cycle? Again, I would come back. Let's say I reached this and I'm a beginner, right? And I come all the way back and I saw that my first run was, was easy. You'd start all over again with a long run on a Sunday. And maybe you decide to increase your duration now, right? And that might look like this. You hop over to this, to 60 to 90 minutes right? Maybe, you, and remember, you're shooting for the lower end because during this time period, you should be able to move over to the intermediate. And after you go through this 14-day cycle, you may be able to go over to the advanced. But it doesn't necessarily have to be such a big jump that way. That's why I set ranges here. So maybe you just create a new range here, which goes 50 to... Uh, maybe 50 to 75 minutes, something in between this. But it needs to be a little bit better than what you did the previous two weeks, okay? So there could actually be a whole nother experience level set between beginner and intermediate here, and a whole nother experience level set between intermediate and advanced here. I just wanted to give you an idea for you to get started. And last but not least, you know, we're going to be creating a mix each week of each of these type of uh, run sessions as a group run together. So a community run for BC. So we might one day pick a long run, we'll pick an easy day, we'll pick a moderate, we'll pick long intervals, and we'll also pick uh, short intervals as you see here. And you guys are all invited to be able to come into those runs with us and we'll have some volunteers that will also lead the runs uh, to help our asses get in shape for this. So don't stress about it. Make sure you register ASAP. Like right now, use Body Culture as the code. Click on the link that you'll see in the comments below.